One of the paramount goals of modern hip replacement surgery is optimal reconstruction of the existing hip anatomy. In addition to so-called neutral hip joints with CCD angles of about 120 to 130 degrees, there are markedly valgus and varus femoral necks that present particular challenges in the context of endoprosthetic treatment. While a low femoral offset and a high CCD angle are characteristic in valgus anatomies, in varus hip joints, a large femoral offset must be reconstructed. The guiding structure for the optimus stem is the calcar, the medial cortex of the femoral neck. In the following steps, you will learn how to achieve reliable implantation along this guiding structure in the various anatomical situations, depending on individual variation and the level of the femoral neck osteotomy. The following two radiographs show a valgus hip with small femoral offset and short femoral neck, and a varus hip with correspondingly large offset and longer femoral neck. According to the standard of modern hip endoprosthetic surgery, preoperative planning is mandatory. Here, particular attention should be paid to the level of the osteotomy, the height of the prosthesis shoulder, and the contact of the lateral prosthesis tip with the lateral cortex. In the following, the crucial steps of the individualized surgical technique in calcar guided endoprosthetics are presented, which enables precise implementation of the preoperative planning and reconstruction of a wide variety of hip anatomies in valgus as well as in varus positions. The key step of the implantation technique is an individualized osteotomy of the femoral neck. While in case of a valgus configuration, a deep resection is to be performed, a high osteotomy should be selected especially for varus hips and as much femoral neck as possible thus left standing. In most cases, the osteotomy should be done orthograde to the femoral neck axis regardless of the resection level. After removal of the femoral head, Preparation of the acetabulum and insertion of the acetabular implant. Preparation of the proximal femur begins with the curved opening brooch. The entry point of the opening varies depending on the planned stem positioning. If a valgus position of the short stem is desired, the entry point into the femur is to be located in the middle of the resection plane and along the femoral stem axis. If varus positioning of the implant is to be achieved, the entry point must be selected strictly in the area of the medial cortex and along the calcar, protecting both the lateral cortex and the lateral cancellus bone in the region of the piriform fossa. Preparation of the implant bed begins with the so-called starting rasp in accordance with the entry planes described above. While rasping with slight lateral pressure is allowed already here in valgus anatomies, in varus hips this is to be avoided. Here the preparation uses the so-called around the corner technique. Preparation using ascending rasp sizes is carried out until reliable press fit and rotational stability of the rasp can be achieved and no further advancement into the femur by hammer strokes is possible. While, in addition to metaphyseal anchoring, fit and fill in the proximal diaphysis is desired in valgus hips, In varus anatomies, the goal is to achieve metaphyseal anchoring with three-point support. For control of the correct positioning and resulting type of anchorage, as well as of the correct size selection, in calcar-guided short-stem endoprosthetics, intraoperative X-ray control under fluoroscopy should be carried out after the initial trial reduction. In particular, Sufficient contact between the implant and the distal lateral cortex must be ensured. 
Adjustments can be made at this point of the surgery if necessary. The final implant follows the path of the rasp and will generally be seated in the exact same position. In summary, it is generally not necessary to leave the cortical ring in the area of the femoral neck when treating valgus hip anatomies. However, care must be taken to ensure sufficient fit and fill in the proximal diaphysis and, in particular, sufficient contact of the implant in the area of the distal lateral cortex. In addition to metaphyseal fixation, the type of fixation in valgus hips necessitates diaphyseal fixation, which can have an effect on implant properties in medium and long-term bone preservation. The situation is different in various anatomies. Here, it is essential to leave a cortical ring on the femoral neck. Anchorage can then be predominantly metaphyseal. However, it is mandatory to ensure that here, too, the distal part of the prosthesis makes contact with the distal lateral cortex of the femur. Only then is reliable three-point support and thus primary stability given. Fit and fill in the proximal diaphysis should be prevented in order to ensure metaphyseal bone preservation over the long term as well. The result shows precise reconstruction of the anatomical conditions such as the CCD angle and femoral offset along with reliable primary stability. By observing all the steps described, individualized implantation is reliably possible in a wide range of differing anatomies.